A few of traders' favorite things is stocks the pros want to own. In today's cover story, a wake-up call for orange juice manufacturers, plus common pitfalls for entrepreneurs trying to light up business in the marijuana industry, and how to tweet your way to a better brand. First Business starts now. You're watching First Business. Financial news, analysis, and today's investment ideas. Good morning, I'm Angel Miles. It's Wednesday, August 20th. In today's first look, an S&P 500 record within reach. Buyers swarmed to the stock market, sending that index 0.3% away from closing at an all-time high. The Dow rallied closer to 17,000, and the NASDAQ is looking at its best level since the year 2000. Gold is back below $1,300 per ounce and a big dip in oil as it breaks below $95 per barrel. Apple tops $100 for the first time since its stock split. And a report says pet supplier PetSmart is considering hunting for a buyer. Our trading day starts with Chris Gersh of Altimus Capital. He's watching the market for us. And Chris, we came oh so close to a record with the S&P 500 yesterday. Angie, we did. I think a lot of traders see the momentum to the higher side. Low volume usually means a grind higher. Higher volume, I think we might have a pullback. Dollar index is at yearly highs as well. So a lot of individuals think if that dollar continues to get stronger, there's going to be some selling pressure on earnings. How about that plunge in oil? Huge plunge in oil. That was a technical trade. There was support at 95.50 that had held for almost 14 months. Once it broke through that point, it went below 95. I believe a good exit would be 96.50 to the high side. That's a great trade right now. What about your stock favorites? What would you be a buyer of in this market? I would be a buyer of uh, those stocks that continue to perform well with excellent CEOs. I think you need to be a stock picker. One of those is Home Depot. I own it. My kids own it. I think Home Depot is best of breed. Any other names you like? I, I think Verizon had a great pullback yesterday. That is a buying opportunity as well. So VZ. Good to have you on the show. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Angie. Attorney General Eric Holder will monitor the intense situation in Ferguson, Missouri today. Yesterday in St. Louis, a young man reportedly carrying a knife was killed by police. Business leaders are gauging the economic blow to the area. At least 25 businesses have had windows shattered and items stolen since the riots broke out following the August 9th shooting of unarmed teenager Michael Brown. Many stores are boarded up but still open for business and some restaurants are losing money. Kathy Osborne, executive director of the St. Louis Business Council, is Skyping with us this morning. Good morning and please describe what you are seeing. Some of the businesses have been hit multiple times. So what they're doing now is they're boarding up, some cases closing four or five in the afternoon. Um, it does show you the resilience though of the small business owner because many of them get up every morning and come back and sweep the streets and clean things up and get ready for the day. Kathy, what is the effect on the economy? I don't think there's a huge impact right now. I think what you're looking at is how quickly can we get business up and running? How quickly can we get people feeling comfortable to go to Ferguson, feel comfortable to, of course, uh, send their kids to school. That, that's really the issue. So I don't think it's a short-term hit. I think it's a more of a long-term situation that, that it, the, the longer we keep kids out of school and the longer people can't reopen their businesses, it just is it's more difficult for the community and for all of us. Well, thank you for that update. We hope to have you back again. Thank you so much. Angie, a wage fight is dividing San Diego. This week, San Diego City Council approved a proposal to gradually increase the minimum wage to $11.50 an hour by 2017. That's up from the current $9 an hour. Also, workers would get five paid sick days a year. San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner has promised a veto. However, Democrats say they do have enough votes to override it. Republicans contend that the wage increase will hurt small business owners and force layoffs. A poll finds Chicago could be the next city to try and hike wages. American wages are likely to be one of the hot topics at this weekend's economic conference in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Fed Chair Janet Yellen will deliver the keynote speech Friday. Yellen considers wage growth critical to declaring the job market healed. According to stats compiled by Bloomberg News, from 2008 to 2012, salaries among households in the top 20 percent grew on average by $8,000 per year. In the lowest 20%, wages declined $275 annually. 
A new study strongly contradicts conventional wisdom of CEOs that the country's corporate tax rate is too high. On paper, the U.S. corporate tax rate is considerably higher than the international average. The U.S. rate of 35% compares unfavorably to Ireland's 12.5%, Britain's 21%, and the Netherlands' 25% rate. According to an analysis from the University of Southern California, U.S. companies actually pay, on average, only a 12.6% tax rate because most stockpile cash abroad. The report also concludes that the U.S. corporate tax code is highly inefficient and needs updating. Home builders are pounding up profits. Housing starts surged nearly 16% last month to more than 1 million units. It's the highest level since November. Home builders were especially quick to construct apartment buildings. We're at the point in the recovery where young people are starting to move out of their parents' homes. That means that we're forming more new households, but most of them are renters, not owners. To keep up with that demand, builders have been upping their construction of apartments. Last year, apartment construction was at a 15-year high, and that trend is continuing this year. That was Jed Kolko, chief economist with Trulia. The number of people filing for building permits topped one million for the fifth month this year. Home Depot is benefiting from the strong housing market. The retailer said this week a spring rebound helped boost sales. It's now raising its outlook for the year. Shares are up four dollars. TJX is also raising its outlook. The company which owns TJ Maxx says earnings jumped more than seven percent due to better sales. Swing and a miss for Dick's Sporting Goods. The chain said sales jump, but its golf business is hurting. And Elizabeth Arden posted its largest ever quarterly loss as the celebrity perfume business fades. Shares got slammed in trading yesterday, falling 23% to close above $15. Something new is percolating at McDonald's. A fast food chain plans to sell its packaged coffee at supermarkets nationwide by early next year. McDonald's is working with Kraft Food to manufacture and distribute McCafe ground and whole bean coffee along with single serve pods. Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts already sell packaged coffee. The CEO of McDonald's believes highlighting its coffee will brew up more business. In today's cover story, orange juice sales are at their lowest point in more than 12 years. Now, part of it is seasonal. OJ just doesn't sell as well in summer as in winter. There's also a blight in Florida and more competition on supermarket shelves. American consumers are getting their vitamin C fix somewhere else. Orange juice consumption in July fell more than 9% lower than it was a year ago and down 39% from 10 years ago. Prices are very high, so right now in this economy, we can afford it when it's very high. Jack Scoville, a commodities trader, says part of the downturn happens every year at this time. Well, in the winter time, of course, people are worried about the flu and worried about cold, so they're, they're more likely to consume orange juice. In the summertime, uh, there's less concern about that. People feel healthier, they're out and running around. But there's also been an explosion of competition. Sports and energy drinks, 5% of the beverage market 15 years ago, have more than tripled to 16% of sales now. Fruit juices of all kinds, once 24% of sales back then, have dropped to 17% of beverage sales. And among juices, consumers have far more choices on supermarket shelves. Vitamin C and juice from pineapples, guavas, mangoes, lychees, kiwis, papayas, and blueberries. Berry juice, different type of brands, but it doesn't matter what brand I have, as long as it's cheap brand, as long as it's the cheap one for me. <laughs> Demand is down and so is supply. A bacterial disease has decimated citrus groves in Florida. One commodities forecaster predicted Florida's crop this year would be the smallest in 29 years and next year's to be the smallest in 50 years. Scoville has these suggestions for investors. If you can identify a range and trade that range, you're probably better off. Right now, you're probably looking at something maybe close to $1.20 a pound on the downside and up something closer to $1.80 a pound on the upside where you'd really want to take or perhaps consider some pretty strong action. The upheaval in the orange market has contributed to Minute Maid owner Coca-Cola to make a $2 billion bid for energy drink maker Monster Beverage. People go nuts for Nutella, but a global shortage of hazelnuts might mean they have to pay a lot more for the treat. Poor weather in Turkey, the world's biggest hazelnut producer, could trigger a hefty price spike. Hazelnut prices have already hit a 10-year high. Nutella uses close to a fourth of the global hazelnut supply. The troubles in Turkey could, however, be a plus for hazelnut growers in Oregon. It's being called the biggest spin-off in mining history. BHP Billiton will separate its silver, coal, and aluminum operations to create a new company. Restructuring plans have been anticipated for some time. The new $15 billion company will begin trading next year 
and will operate in five countries. The company's shares closed flat yesterday at 70.03. Investors had anticipated a buyback of shares as part of the restructuring. Also, there are ongoing concerns about a global drop in commodity prices. In a sign the global economy is picking up, the world's largest shipping company is upping its container count. Mahler Maersk is lifting its earnings outlook as freight volumes increase. The Danish shipping company reports volume rose 6.6 percent in the second quarter as net profit tripled to $2.3 billion. The World Trade Organization predicts trade will more than double this year despite fears of slowing economies in Europe and China. Steve Ballmer proves he's more than just the owner of the L.A. Clippers. He's a bona fide super fan. At a Clippers rally this week, the former Microsoft CEO and new Clippers owner pumped up the crowd promising a new era for the team. Ballmer bought the Clippers from former owner Donald Sterling for $2 billion. Sterling was banned from the NBA back in April after racist comments by Sterling were made public. Ballmer stepped down from Microsoft's board Tuesday. Bouncing over to the economic calendar now, the MBA Mortgage Index, Crude Inventories, and FOMC Minutes. On the earnings calendar at Staples, L Brands, Hewlett Packard, Target, Jam Smucker, American Eagle Outfitters, Lowe's, and PetSmart. Still to come, a trader's blueprint on buying stocks in the housing sector. A Twitter teacher is here with how company owners can make the most of those 140 characters. Plus, the Marijuana Business Academy. It's for real, and Bill Mahler sits down with the CEO. A new look for Nook. Barnes & Noble and Samsung take the wraps off a new e-reader today. Sales have been lagging as Barnes & Noble faces fierce competition from Apple and Amazon. However, tech watchers are curious to see what the Samsung Barnes & Noble partnership has in store. It's expected that the two will unveil a Nook version of Samsung's Galaxy Tab 4. Business owners trying to break out from the crowd often turn to social media. But making a dent in Twitter universe, for instance, can be challenging. Adam Root, co-founder of HipLogic, joins us by Skype this morning. Hello, Adam. Hello, thanks for having me on. Well, your company contends you can boost the number of people following a company and give them a better brand image on Twitter. So what's the first step? The first step is engagement. Go out there and get engagement on Twitter. Listen and respond. What's the biggest secret that you find that people do not understand about Twitter? Uh, Twitter's mute feature. A lot of people don't know that uh, if you're posting too much on Twitter that you can get muted even though they're still following you. So you got to make sure to keep it short and keep your content interesting. I've also heard it pays to be positive or compliment somebody online. Yeah, the best way you can do that is by using the app mention. So listen to an opportunity uh, through Twitter search and then respond to them using the app mention feature and make sure that you keep it positive when you do respond. Should you follow more people to get more followers? You know, I don't think that's a great tactic. I would advise against it. I think uh, as spammy, what you need to do is go out there and listen for an opportunity to showcase your expertise and then uh, mention them with a solution. It is challenging, though. Here at First Business, we have plenty of viewers. But on Twitter, we do sometimes struggle, although we do tweet a lot. You can follow us at First Biz News. You can find me at Angie Miles. Adam Root, great to have you on our show today. Thanks so much for having me. Coming up, Apple shares hit an all-time high. Are traders taking a bite? Then, do businesses need a change of attitude as laws lighten up on marijuana? Security software used to protect the government's healthcare website will remain top secret. The Associated Press requested details about the security software under the Freedom of Information Act. Republicans were concerned about the safety of the website as millions of Americans signed up for health insurance. However, the Obama administration determined releasing the information would make healthcare.gov vulnerable to hackers. Bill Mahler joins us now with a business that is hooked on medical marijuana. State after state is legalizing the use of marijuana for medical, in some cases, recreational use. And that leaves business after business somewhat confused on how to comply with all the new laws. And some uh, individuals worried about what it might mean if a dispenser opens up down the street. Let's talk with Casey Stark. He runs the Marijuana Business Academy, and you travel the country helping businesses just try to figure this out and sort of, I guess I could use the term, clear the air on the many misapprehensions there is about marijuana. You're absolutely right, Bill. And that's, you mentioned the word confusion. 
When you say confusion, I see opportunity. When you say what happens when these centers come to your cities and towns, we call them deep impact. When we open up a medical marijuana center near you, it is the most highly secured 21st century agricultural development the world has ever seen. Secure, safe, monitored, producing life-saving medicine. And it won't create crime, for example, because that is something a lot of people assume is going to take place. That's a good question because we, the assumptions are wrong. If we look at history, we can see in Colorado in just four months, just four months of sales, of retail marijuana sales, 200 million sales, 40 million sales taxes, 10,000 new jobs. We now have as many people employed directly in marijuana in Colorado as we do police officers. Home values up, unemployment down, and it has a lot to do with marijuana business. Now, are the laws, the regulations somewhat patchwork depending on the state? There's no uniformity here, is there? Good question. And it doesn't have to be. America is the melting pot. Our states are a federation of states allowed to con conduct business as they see fit. So that's the beauty of America, is each state can patchwork it as they seem, based on their demographics and their economics and social needs. What do businesses need to know who are going to be getting into this business? The biggest problem is knowledge. If you do not know, if you do not plan, if you do not have a feel of the marijuana matrix, it'll gobble you up and destroy you. I've seen rich men fail and poor men succeed because having a plan is critical. It's marijuana, it's money, it's monopoly, all rolled into one and it shakes up every minute. So you have to be smart, sharp, and prepared for battle. Well, this is a big point of trans, uh, transformation in this industry. Casey Stark, thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Still ahead, Apple climbs to a record and more reasons why traders are building positions in home builder stocks. Chart Talk is next. Great day to have James Romali on our show. James Romali is with KingdomTheMarket.com. Hello, James. Good morning. So, James, here we are with positive economic news coming out about the housing market. Is it a good time to buy the home builders or a bad time? I think it is a good time to buy the home builders. Like you said, we're seeing a lot of upbeat, upbeat data relating to the housing sector this week. We had good housing numbers on Monday and follow through with good data on Tuesday as well. In addition to the home builders, we're also seeing very bullish activity in home improvement related retailers like Home Depot and Lowe's. Now, one home builder I want to talk about specifically is Toll Brothers, T-O-L. Now, this stock has been down this year. It's down around 4.5%. So in a market where valuations are looking stretched across a lot of different sectors, this might be a good place for me to, to, to deploy some capital, especially as I see institutional money coming in and getting long this day. We're seeing a lot of upside call activity in TOL, along with other home builders like DHI and KBH. Now, these have been uh, three stocks that have caught a lot of activity, a lot of call buying on Monday and Tuesday, and it's the first time we've really seen institutional money coming in and getting aggressively long a sector over the past month and a half or so. I have to ask you about Apple. Apple going above $100 in the market yesterday. So what do you think about this stock? Right, so Apple traded north of 100 during Tuesday's session, and I think this is pretty typical price action that we tend to see going into the release of a new phone. The iPhone 6 is supposed to come out in September, and generally we see Apple trend higher into that release, but then we tend to see it cool off once the phone comes out, and then we kind of wait on the sales numbers and see just how strong the demand is for that phone. We are seeing a lot of upside call activity, traders selling long call positions that they had on and buying more aggressive price targets, so I do think that the trend is going to continue higher through September and maybe into the next month out. However, I do not want to get aggressively long Apple until I see some sales numbers on this new phone and see exactly what the demand for a larger format phone might be. Thanks for coming on the show, James. Thank you for having me. Coming up on our show tomorrow, the cure for the summertime blues at the box office in movies and money. That's it for now. From all of us at First Business, have a great day.